Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Happy Neck 100, and today I am back with another LEGO Avengers Infinity War set review for you guys today. So today I have Thor's Weapon Quest. This set has a set number of 76102. It has 223 pieces, and this set retails for $19.99. Now, you can get these sets everywhere now. I happen to get this one at Target, and I really, really like this set. Uh, you get three great figures. You have a really nice pod design that actually has an even bigger playability function that I'll show on later in the video. But you get a new Thor, you get an amazing Groot minifigure, it's about time we got one of them, and we have Rocket. And come on, like who doesn't love Rocket, who doesn't love Groot, and who doesn't love Thor? Uh, but yeah, for $20, I think you get a lot, and I think this set is definitely worth it. Um, but yeah. So, I think I've been rambling on for long enough, so let's get right into this review. Starting off with a God of Thunder himself, we have Thor. Now, this is a brand new Thor variant, which is only exclusive to this set, which is really cool, and I happen to really like this design. Um, I'm pretty sure that this is based off of concept art, because Thor, for, for I think a majority of the movie, is going to have his same outfit that he had in the end credit scene to Thor Ragnarok. Um, it had like a more sleek look, so he's out of his Sakaran, uh road-worn traditional Thor armor. I actually really like that look, um, but I think that Thor's new outfit looks really sick here. Uh, not a whole lot of printing, just stuff on the torso. He's sleeveless this time around, and Thor's got gloves this time, so uh, Thor doesn't really have gloves. He has more of like black wristbands on each wrist, but there's not really anything else <laughs> to the figure. Um, Thor does have the Sleepy Boy spiky hair piece in this lightish, lightish brown color. It's like the Star-Lord hair color. So, I've never had this hair piece in this color before, so that's really nice. Lego carried over the same head from the Thor Ragnarok sets, which is nice, but I, my only real complaint is that I wish that we could have at least gotten one Thor minifigure with the eye patch. Um, because, yeah, it just... I don't know, it doesn't look as consistent, but you know what, it's okay, it was probably, bit, I've seen concept art and t-shirts and stuff where Thor has both eyes, so. Moving along to the back side of his face, he has the same, like, lightning in his eyes look when he's all, like, really powered up, especially, like, <laughs> that one final battle from Thor Ragnarok, which actually, uh, comes out on Blu-ray, uh, it came out on Blu-ray yesterday, so, yeah, which is really cool. But Thor is really nice. He has this uh, really cool new hammer. This is the Stormbreaker. Now, in the comics, the Stormbreaker is wielded by Beta Ray Bill, but I don't think Marvel has any plans to bring him into the movie. So, Thor has a new hammer. Or it's kind of like an axe-type hammer thing. Still really cool. I think that this wood piece up here is supposed to hint that, you know, Groot provides the wood, like, for the shaft for Thor's new weapon. So, still really cool. But that's it for Thor, so let's move on to the next figure. The next figure in this set is Groot. Teen Groot, Adolescent Groot, whatever his name is, whatever the actual technical official name is for this Groot. I'm just calling him Groot. <laughs> but this figure is really nice. This is the first time where we've actually gotten a minifigure Groot. Um, we got like the one... I want to say it was based off the baby mold for like that one Lego baby thing. That I think came with like the babysitter collectible figure or something like that. I don't, I don't remember where that baby came from, but I still kind of, I still prefer Baby Groot, I think, but this Teen Groot figure is absolutely amazing, and this is like the most accurate, aside from Baby Groot, uh, thing that LEGO has made based off of Groot, because the one from the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie was not that great. D Cool made a Groot, which was nicer, but it was still too big, but now I'm finally glad that we have one that is minifig size, <laughs> so it's really cool. His main accessory is this one whip right here. Uh, we just get rid of that. It's not. I think that's just supposed to be like an extension of like his roots or whatever. But aside from that, still really cool. Um, not a whole lot of printing anywhere else. It's just on the torso, and then we have an entirely new head mold, which is really nice. So this is going to be the main reason I think for a lot of people when they want to buy this set because. You know, Groot doesn't come in every LEGO set, and this is the best Groot that LEGO's put out so far, so... I think I've been rambling on long enough, so let's move on to the final figure in this set. Alright, so the final figure that you get in this set is Rocket. 
Now, this is the exact same Rocket figure that we got in the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 sets last year. It still works, because I don't think Rocket has a new outfit or anything, or anything too spectacular of notice to warrant a new figure. But, you know, still really cool. Rocket is one of my favorite characters in the Guardians of the Galaxy, and excited to see him again uh, teaming up with the Avengers this time around, because I really want to see his chemistry and how other how the other heroes will react to a talking cybernetic and cybernetically enhanced raccoon. Still really cool. Rocket's main accessory is this one gun piece, which is just a one by one cylinder piece attached to one of the Space Invader. Was it Space? Was it Space Invader? It was something. Galaxy Quest. It was the Galaxy Quest pistols or something like that. But aside from that, not really a whole, whole much of anything else. Still really cool. Great figure. And I think this is actually the cheapest, no, it's one of the cheapest sets you can get Rocket in, because he came in the cheapest of the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 sets. But that's it for all the minifigures that you get in this set. Now let's move into the set itself. Now, before I get into the two main builds of the set, I forgot to mention that Thor also comes with the accessory pieces, like the Power Blast pieces. You guys have already seen these before. Um... They serve purposes, you know, like when they're appropriate, like these two things right here are Power Blast pieces, but they work for the build. So, they're cool. Um, I guess LEGO is just trying to, I guess LEGO mass produce these. They're just trying to put these in like every set now with the superhero lines, so. I don't know. Thor doesn't shoot fire, so. <laughs> I don't know, it doesn't work. So, moving on to the first build of the set, we have this little chamber, which I think is supposed to house Thor's new weapon. So. Before I actually show off any of the playability, I'm just going to give you guys a quick look. There are two stickers. Uh, one is right there. One is here. And then uh, here on the back, we have the purple Infinity Stone, which is the Power Stone, I believe. So we saw this one in Guardians of the Galaxy, the first one. So it's really cool how you know we get to how we get an Infinity Stone in every set. So. That's cool. But now moving along to the playability, there's a little Technic piece right here, and if you turn it, it turns this uh, one Power Blast shield piece, just turns it like that, so it's supposed to show, like, you know, if something's happening. But then, the main thing with this build is that this entire bottom segment can push in and out, just like that, so it's like a drawer. So you're supposed to put uh, the st Thor's hammer, the Stormbreaker, in here you could shut it so when you're playing with it and role playing with it you can turn it to make it look like the weapons being forged and then this just pops right out so I got a little lazy with that you can easily take it out but that is where you're supposed to put it and then like I just said you do get the purple infinity stone and I believe this is one of the accessory pieces from the friends line I'm not entirely sure because I don't collect Lego friends or really pay attention to it so that is really uh, it for this first build. So then, next up, we have the pod. Now, you guys are probably wondering why this pod is so important to me, at least. But I'll get to that in just a second. But, this pod's really nice. It's a nice little small build. Um, there was a shot in the trailer that we saw that has Rocket, Groot, and Thor all in a pod that looks just like this. You guys can see it in the trailer. But it's really cool, there's a lot of stickers on this pod actually, there's one here and one here, and then we have two up top on these slope pieces, and then it's just the same thing on the other side, but just continuing the design, so, <laughs> yeah. And then you have these flaps up here up top that articulate, you have two stud shooters up here, uh, these two other, I don't really know what these are called, the fins I guess, uh, and you have a bunch of uh, trans purple one by one uh, slopes. And then the main thing is that this entire top can come off, and this is where you can actually seat all the figures. Now, something I learned today while I was messing around with it is that, well, I mean, first of all, aside from the fact that you can open up this back window and then open up the front, but you're supposed to seat the minifigures like in here. So, uh, starting off with the front, you can actually pose Rocket right up here in the front because he's the one that's supposed to be you know flying it and it closes nicely then you have to take Groot there's a little 
it's weird. I'm now noticing there's a color identification thing too to where each figure is supposed to sit. So brown for Groot. So Groot sits in the middle. And then you have this one piece here uh, with a little divider that actually fits minifigure legs. And you can take Thor and you sit Thor down on the back. You gotta raise up his arms a little because there's slope pieces in the way. So stick Thor in there. Then you could shut that. And then you can actually shut the top of the pod. So that is really it for uh, the main set itself. So like I said, this is now the time where I'm going to show you why I really like the pod, and especially why I really like the new Milano. So if you guys remember this new Guardian ship, uh, I just reviewed it in my last video. But what you're supposed to do with the pod, and why the pod's so important to me, is that if you notice, here on the bottom of the pod, you have these Technic pieces here, and then you have these three holes here. Now what you're supposed to do with the ship is you're supposed to lift up these little flaps up here and then you're supposed to lift these two things up and then you can actually slide the back pod you can slide the pod onto the back of the ship so I need to see if I got it connected because I think I did so then you can close the flaps like that and then you take these two pieces and you press them down onto the studs right below them and now you have one big complete ship. Now personally I could have seen Lego maybe just deciding to split these or just to combine these both into one set but I think you know for like obvious money purposes you know they have six sets with six infinity stones so one per set would have kind of thrown everything off if we got two and one so that's really cool. This is especially why I love the new Milano or the Guardian ship whatever you want to call it and then why I love the pod set so much because you can connect it to the back. Now to take it off what you have to do is pop up these pieces once again and then you can lift up these flaps. These things are kinda of hard to fiddle with sometimes but then you can just pop it out just like that and you don't have to lift up the door or anything to the back of that Milano and that is how you <laughs> attach the pod to the rest of the Milano. So. I think that is it for the set itself, so let's finally get in to the closing of this review. Alright guys, well that is it for the set itself. Um, before I end the video, I just wanted to add the purple stone to the Infinity Gauntlet. Now I think, if I'm looking at it right, <laughs> the purple stone is actually supposed to go on the side with the thumb. So. This is where the power stone goes here on the gauntlet. If I can get it, it's really small, so it's kind of hard to maneuver. <laughs> so that is where the purple infinity stone is supposed to go. So two down, four to go. So that's really cool. But aside from that, that is it for the set itself. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like this video. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Follow me on all my social media platforms. Links are down in the description below. I should have the Sanctum Sanctorum review out next, so stay tuned for that, and until the next video, I'll see you guys later. Bye.